Hello friends, it's Steve from Southern Illinois and I have always wanted to do this. Finally, after a year and plus of uh, <clears throat> these Sabbath devotions, I get to do one in the rain. Yeah, about an hour after we uh, parted company last Sabbath, <clears throat> I uh, crashed and went to sleep. And when Vivian woke me up, Hmm, good three, four hours later, I was in the middle of a shaking chill. And she took my temperature, it was only 100.4, but I was feeling terrible. And uh, now, 20 years ago in Africa, 40 years ago in Indonesia, if I had told you this, your immediate question would have been, oh, is it malaria? We Americans would never think of that, okay? Um, up until two years ago, we might have said, oh, do you have the flu? Or a mother with a child would have said, oh, do they have an ear infection or strep throat? But this being 2022, what do we think of? We think of COVID. <clears throat> so my mind went to COVID and I started going down the list of symptoms of COVID. Okay, fever, check, little short of breath. Am I short of breath? Well, yeah, I'm kind of short of breath. Check. Okay, and I just started going down, and the more I, the more further down I went the list, the worst I started feeling. Okay, I started getting nauseated, and I started uh, chilling again, and aching, and. Next day, I went to go get a COVID test, and wouldn't you know it, um, demand is so high right now that hospitals can't get get enough supplies, so it had to be sent to the state lab, which meant I was going to have to wait two or three days. So we went into the self-isolation at home and went through that whole rigmarole, but you know, as I was thinking about COVID, the second direction my mind went was towards death. I know, morbid, but COVID can get bad really fast. You can go from a little short of breath to gasping within 20 minutes. And... Um, So what do you think about when you are getting your affairs in order, uh, thinking about death? Uh, you'd be surprised at my priorities. Relationships? No. Uh, relationships are really important to me. I, I, I uh, take care of problems in relationships as soon as possible. So I don't have a lot of loose strings left uh, hanging. Uh, finances? No, I'm blessed with a wife who has that well in hand. Um, my mind went to passwords. <laughs> you see, I'm kind of like the 10-year-old kid in my immediate circle, uh, both at work and at home. I'm an early adopter. I, I like using new technology. And, um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm the 10-year-old kid that everybody goes to, to um, for help on their computers. And... If I disappeared from the scene, I don't think anybody would know how to access and manage our company website. Uh, Vivian wouldn't know how to access our retirement funds. There's just a whole list of things that I carry the passwords to access things in my head. So I started writing down this list of passwords Where would your mind go if you were getting your affairs in order? Okay. One of the life skills that I was taught when I was a teenager was to observe myself from afar. As my mentor put it, you know, Steve, it's so easy to get caught up in the emotions and in the thoughts and the activity of now that we lose context, we lose a frame of reference. And so it's important to learn 
how to step back emotionally and psychologically and observe our behavior and our thoughts as if they belong to someone else, someone we don't mind critiquing. And so as I'm going down this laundry list of COVID and as I'm thinking about passwords, in my mind I'm also stepping back and I'm just chuckling because, you know, Steve thinks he has COVID and he doesn't. But because he thinks he has COVID, he's looking for all of these things he wouldn't even be looking for otherwise. You know, perceptions and expectations are so mixed up together. Our expectations shape our, our perceptions, shape our experience. As a doctor, if you come to me and I prescribe a medication for you and I inform you of, of several side effects, right away, the probability that you will experience those side effects doubles. Just by my telling you of the side effects. In the same sense, if I tell you this medication is going to give you a specific benefit, as opposed to here's a prescription, the likelihood that you will experience that benefit doubles. Perceptions and expectations change and shape and mold our experiences in ways that, that are just unfathomable to us. Okay? And it doesn't matter how intelligent or unintelligent you are. Okay? They've done the, these studies with college students, with college professors, with PhDs, okay? Everybody has shows the same way. Our expectations shape our perceptions. So, thinking about death. How do our expectations of death shape our experience? Well, there are three pictures of death that are very common across all religious boundaries. Okay? One of the commonest is that death is a transition point, a gateway, if you will, from the physical reality to a spiritual reality. And it manifests itself in our experience in, in ways like this. Have you ever heard someone say, Heaven gained another angel today. Death as a gateway, a transition point. Or, she's in a better place now. Many people speak of the dead as if they're watching over them, protecting them, guiding them, taking care of them. Others talk to the dead as if they're alive. <laughs> one, of, one of the modern manifestations of that is heavenly birthday greetings posted on Facebook for dead people. And still others experience visitations, dead people appearing before them and talking to them years sometimes after they've died. Probably equally common today though is the expectation that death translates to nothingness. A brick wall with no tomorrow. Now we usually don't talk about this at funerals, okay? We don't talk about dead people as if they're nothing. Instead, what we do is we talk about their lives and things that happen during their lives. And to my perception, the proliferation in America from of going from having funerals to holding celebrations of life is a manifestation of this, the rising tide of this perception, this expectation in our society. And the third, the third uh, expectation of death is that death is a descent into unconsciousness, like falling asleep. This perspective is tied to an expectation of resurrection 
or reincarnation. Here in America, if you look at tombstones from the first half of the 1900s, you'll find them about evenly distributed between asleep in Jesus, looking forward to the resurrection, and with Jesus now, I'm in a better place. Asian dramas, on the other hand, are full of stories of people promising to look each other up in the next life. How did the people in the Bible relate to death? What was their expectation? Well, when you go through the Bible, most of the passages, uh, death is described as a brick wall, as nothingness. In Genesis 3, telling the story of when sin and death entered into this world, it's described this way. From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. You came from dust, you were made out of dust, and you're going back to dust. Living forever in that story is tied to eating from the tree of life. There is no such thing as an immortal soul. Immortality is tied to eating from the tree of life. And when it was removed, people were on a one-way one -way street towards death. In Psalms 104, verse 29, the poet says, Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to the dust. And in Ecclesiastes, death is described repeatedly as the end of thought, the end of action, the end of all of our earthly desires, the end of all knowledge. So the concept in the Bible of death that's expressed throughout the Old Testament is primarily that of hitting a brick wall. But there are two books that speak differently. Job talks about sleeping in the dust, but he also speaks of his hope of seeing God again in the flesh of resurrection. And Daniel takes it even a step further. In chapter 12, the angel tells him, Many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. The New Testament develops this theme of resurrection much more fully. In fact, the whole emphasis of the gospel in the New Testament is resurrection. Jesus was resurrected, therefore you can have the hope of being resurrected after death. Jesus and the disciples almost always spoke of death as sleep. But nowhere in the Bible does it ever suggest that dead people become angels or an immediate reward or transition from a physical reality into a spiritual reality. And as far as communicating with the dead and the dead watching over us and taking care of us, the Bible soundly condemns that. It actually prohibits God's people from speaking to or trying to speak to the dead. These may be new thoughts to many of you, okay? And I understand that. This touchstone of the spiritual life of people in the Bible is almost completely missing from the Christianity of Western culture today. But when you think about it, why would I need dead family members and friends watching over me? I have Jesus, Almighty God, the King of the universe, whose love and watch care is more constant, more powerful, more intimate, more pure than anything we can experience from humans. Is his love insufficient that I would be wanting to appeal to dead people? Is his watch care inadequate? Are they more capable of taking care of me than Jesus? 
for that matter, what need have I of immortality apart from God? This same Jesus who loves me has promised that he will return, raise me up, restore me to those who have died before me and to those who are living. Are his promises not trustworthy? I look forward to the resurrection. My expectation of death is that when I die, I will slip into unconsciousness and the next thing that I know will I be I will hear the voice of the archangel of God calling me forth from the grave. I look forward to a happy reunion with those that I love. But even more so, I look forward to meeting Jesus face to face and experiencing his love fully in a world where death has completely been removed. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. I hope to see you again next week.